Hi! Hello! What's up? This episode is about one of the most unique buildings ever constructed, the Kowloon Walled City. Located in Hong Kong, this infamous skyscraper slum was Whoa, once- Whoa, bro. The... Slum's a pretty heavy word. I'm just reading the prompter. Well, how should we put it? A shanty town? How's the walled city a shanty, dude? That's like a house built like a shed or something, right? Fine, what about a favela? I mean, in Brazil, favelas are built like house by house. And they're like huge cities, not like one giant building. Fine, you come up with a word. What about like organic structure, bro? The Kowloon Walled City was built like story by story. I mean, dude, like not to insult it, but it looks more like a beehive than like a normal building. Organic structure? Remind me not to let you name my kid. Why would I name your kid? I was joking. And how are you gonna have a kid, bro? Is there like a Mrs. Green Dot? Uh, of course there isn't. I'm a drawing. Dude, you're never gonna get chicks thinking like that. Hey, let's get back to the prompter? Please. The Kowloon Walled City was once the densest place on Earth, with roughly 45,000 people living in the footprint of a large urban park, or six and a half acres of land. Although it was full of gangs and illegal businesses like dog meat restaurants and unlicensed dentists, the uh, organic structure was also a tourist destination of sorts. Due to the risk of doing construction without any architectural guidelines, structures like the walled city are unlikely to be made in today's modern world. But even though it was destroyed in 1993, Hong Kong's iconic vertical whatever it is continues to inspire architects and fiction writers today. Iconic is an understatement, bro. They basically recreated part of it for an arcade in Tokyo. Wait, what? Yeah, supposedly they really nailed it, dude. That's pretty crazy. Okay, so the Kowloon Walled City gets part of its name from Kowloon, which is a sort of borough of Hong Kong. The walled city was right next to Kai Tak Airport, which has since been decommissioned. Yeah, flying to that airport was hella sketchy, dude. It was like right in the middle of Kowloon, and that whole place is like really, really dense. Right, Kowloon's just across the water from the city's main borough, Hong Kong Island, too. The ferry takes 10 minutes. I mean, or you can take the subway, bro. Sure, but you'll miss the views. Wait, Hong Kong has burrows? Kind of. I don't think they call them boroughs, though. Hong Kong Island's like the financial center. It's like New York in a jungle on like the coast of an island. And Kowloon's kind of similar, dude, but it's got its own vibe. And Kowloon neighborhoods like Mancock can get kind of sketchy. Bro, those night markets are sick, though. But uh, then you have the new territories, which is the largest section of Hong Kong, but not that populated. And islands like Lantau and Lama they're technically part of the city, even though they're like kind of rural, just like the new territories. Wait, Hong Kong is a city, but it has rural parts? A lot of Chinese cities are administered like that, bro. Only a quarter of Hong Kong is actually urban. The rest is like either parkland or wilderness. Wilderness? Yeah, dude. Wild pigs and stuff. That's nuts. So, dude. What part of Hong Kong is the best for picking up chicks? Bro, I mean, the mid-levels, usually. Wait, what? How do you even Come know? on, guys! So, Kowloon was given to the British by the Chinese in 1860. Bro, given? Dude, you're a terrible person just for saying that. Hey, it's the prompter! It's not me! The British took Kowloon, bro. In Hong Kong, really. What do you mean? Well, like, dude... Hong Kong history starts way back in the early 1800s. I'm not sure we have to go- Bro, this is important. Anyway, it like, began when England had a fat trade deficit with China. A trade what? Basically, England was like, dude, we're buying all this tea and teaware from China, right? But they're not buying anything from us. We're losing a ton of money with these dudes. So England was like, bro, if we sold something back, like traded, we'd get to keep our money. Oh, okay. Right, so they were like, bro, why don't we get China hooked on drugs? What? They were burly, dude. Like, England was evil. Total bad guy stuff, bro. It was evil, but it was English corporations, not England itself. Bro, whatever. England could have stopped them. Right, but they operated without- England the loaned them battleships, dude. That's a fact. Well, fair enough. Battleships? That's later, bro. Anyway, so the English were like, let's grow poppies on our plantations in India and we can trade China opium for tea, dudes, so that we can keep our money. Opium? It's basically heroin. Wait, what? 
So like the evil plan worked, right? And China got addicted to opium. And then like- I mean, not all of China. Bro, enough of China that China was like, hey England, you have to stop selling us this like horrible drug that's destroying our society, right? Like the emperor of China personally wrote the queen of England a letter about it, dude. She never got that letter. And she couldn't have Bro, done my- You're seriously gonna defend England here? It's just not that simple. England wasn't- Dude, it's not that complicated either. What happened next? China like banned people from importing opium. Oh cool, a happy ending. That's awesome. Wait, what does this have to do with Hong Kong? Are you going to tell him? Nah, bro. I want to hear you explain it. Uh, well, making it illegal didn't stop the English from, uh, importing opium. Wait, what? It was illegal, right? Bro, ships, like, hung out off China's coast, and boats would grab the opium there and take it back to the mainland. It was like the ships off the U.S. coast when they banned alcohol, dude. They called that rum row. Wait, really? Yeah, dude. And like, prohibition was when the US mob was born. They were distributing the booze. And like, there's not a lot of information about this, but I bet Chinese organized crime saw a boost in the 1830s. Like, someone had to distribute the opium in the same way. Whoa, that's crazy! Like I said, that's like a maybe, dude. But yeah. Anyway, uh, bro, you wanna keep going? Ah, so then there was a bigger crackdown on opium in China. Kind of a zero tolerance thing, and then English companies... Uh... Yeah, bro, what's up? Okay, fine. This part was pretty evil. What happened? Dude, England was like, Well, China won't let us sell them opium, so let's go to war with China. What? Why? So they could keep selling them opium, bro. Are you serious? And the English, like, won the war, dude. And part of the deal was they got to build this city on Hong Kong Island. And that was 1842. Wait, that's how Hong Kong was founded? Look, you've got to at least admit that a lot of English people didn't agree with the opium wars. Oh, fully, bro. Just like, no one important enough to stop them from happening. Opium wars? There was another one? Yeah, like, the English want a better deal, and then a French dude got killed for being where he wasn't supposed to be in China. So France and England, like, fought China again, and when they won in 1860, they took the Kowloon Peninsula, dude. That's all so messed up! It's all true, bro. China still holds a grudge against England and, like, I get why. There was another war, too. What? I mean, there were a few, dude, but the story of the Kowloon Walled City begins when England got Kowloon. So, like, we're gonna stop there. Uh, go ahead and scope your prompter, bro. Right, so, uh, when England, uh, took Kowloon from China, China kept possession of a fort there, making it a small piece of Chinese land in what was now English territory. The fort's walls are where the Kowloon Walled City name comes from. Although the English kicked out all the Chinese soldiers from the fort in 1899, it was still technically Chinese land, and England couldn't get permission from China to enter it. Basically, if the English went inside, it would be like an international incident, dude. And the Chinese couldn't cross through Hong Kong to enforce their laws. The fort became sort of a no man's land. When the Japanese were occupying Hong Kong during World War II, they made prisoners dismantle the fort's walls and use the material to build the Kai Tak airport next door. At the end of the war, there was nothing physically separating this small patch of China from the English territory that surrounded it. Although squatters had already been living in the fort before the walls came down, the city boomed after the Communist Party took over in mainland China. People would immigrate to Hong Kong illegally and then go to the walled city where they couldn't be deported back. Yeah, dude. And it was a lot of people. And like, even more came in the 60s to avoid Mao's cultural revolution. Over the decades, people tore smaller buildings down and built bigger ones, filling out the old fort. When it was demolished, the organic structure was 14 stories high in some places. Whoa, wait. 14 stories? Yeah, but like, the height wasn't the only crazy part. It was like, literally the size of a big park. That's actually what they built there when the city was torn down. Yeah, dude. And it was like, all one building. It's not like a street went through it or anything. Like, you could walk through the entire thing. Locals called it the City of Darkness, because most of it didn't get any sunlight. Super unique, bro. Sounds cool. Yeah, it wasn't. 
What? Remember when I talked about, like, Chinese organized crime? Yeah, those gangs are known as triads and, like, Two of them basically ran the walled city. Like, it was their turf, dude. Cops weren't allowed in the city, so the gangs just did whatever they wanted. It was like heaven for them. Oh. Yeah, there was like hella prostitution, a lot of gambling dens, an illegal sex show venue. There were sweatshops, dog meat restaurants, the unlicensed dentists. Dentists? Yeah, bro, like over a hundred of them. That doesn't sound that great. Oh, and bro, almost everyone was on heroin. Even the gangsters selling it. That's not true. Right, some of them were on opium. There were good people in the walled city. There were schools and corner stores. It was, it was a community. Mail got delivered and all that. There was even a temple and a church that helped addicts. Oh, there were good people, like, for sure. But life was hella hard there. There were open sewers, trash everywhere, dude. Like, it was rough. Wait, if things were that bad, it's good they demolished it, right? Kind of. If they had been able to preserve it somehow, just the building, that would have been great. Like as a museum or something? Dude, there's no way they could have done that. Right, but just tearing down something that unique is pretty cold. For sure, bro. And like, it's like a lot of things. Like, it's bad, but you have to think of the people that live there. Like, they probably didn't have a lot of options, you know, dude? Like if they came from China illegally. True. It wasn't a simple situation. Exactly, bro. All in all, the Kowloon Walled City will go down in history as an unintentional urban experiment. Because of the opium wars and their aftermath creating a small patch of lawlessness, we saw a 14-story organic structure that was the densest place on earth and a magnet for drugs and vice. In short, humans can do crazy things when the government looks away. Yeah, the Kowloon Walled City is remembered as like a sci-fi nightmare and it continues to inspire artists of all types to this day. But it was a complicated place that saw real suffering. One thing's for sure though, nothing exactly like it will ever be built again. Even if the I gotta skip the outro, bro. What? Dude, I have a date with Green Dot's mom. Oh, ha ha. Oh, and tell your sister I said hi, bro. I don't have a sister. Or a mom. I'm pretty sure you do, bro. We're a bunch of crude drawings. There's no way for us to reproduce. That's what you call it? Dude, no wonder you're bad with the ladies. There are no ladies to be bad with. Again, bro.